Hey guys, Carwell Envoy here. I just wanted to show you, do a quick little brief uh, video on how to install a car radio in a more like a home environment. Um, so what I've done is this is your basic head unit from a car. It's a little dual XDM 260, really cheap, like $30 radio from an Allard or something. Um, but I have it wired up to regular home stereo speakers, so you can see the one all the way down there. But um, and I also have a amp set up with two uh, two twelve subwoofers with a uh, dual, I believe it's a six hundred watt four channel amp um, with speaker outputs. I got that from Advanced Auto. I think it was like eighty dollars ish. Um, Anyway, so what we have is I have my basic two switch setup, and you flip the first one. You get your little, you get a. I have a little voltage meter to keep an eye on my voltage because I have a little trickle charger hooked up to the battery that I'm using. But I'll get into that here in a minute. Um, all I've done is I've taken my hot and co hot and common from the battery. And I've wired it into the radio just like you would a car, only instead of running it through your ignition switch, I just ran it into my main switch here. And out of the switch, I just did my basic wiring. Um, you got your, your red for hot, you got your common ground, and I just have it wired to the front two uh, right and left speakers. I just tied these two together. I owned it out, and it came out okay for the radio. It's not ideal, but it works. Um... So, obviously, your yellow is main power, so you got to keep main power to that in order to hold your clock settings and all that good stuff. And then I also have my second switch set up to where you can flip it on, and that engages your amplifier for the sub. Now, you could obviously just use the blue remote wire that comes pre-installed with the radio, your uh, preamp out settings. And um, then you have your aux out, obviously, for your amplifier. Um, you can see I'm running 14 volts because I have the trickle charger hooked on. But if I unplug it, it'll go down to like 13.5 or something like that. Yeah, 13.3. That's about right. Anyway. Um, I'm not going to really get into a whole lot up there. But that is a deep cycle. I believe it's a marine battery of some sort. Um, you, you can use any any battery for this application. It really doesn't matter. Um, the biggest thing I want to get into is if you're using a battery charger, you want to make sure you're using a 2 amp or less charger. I really recommend using a trickle charger so that you can leave it plugged in while you're using your radio. Because if you use a regular car charger, it'll blow the LEDs out of your head unit. Um, it turns into a major nightmare and um, it's a lot easier. I just use one of the little Stanley chargers. I have one over here. I'll show it to you. Stanley trickle charger. I think they sell those Menards also. Um, but um, basically, I have the charger set up um, where I can just plug it in or just plug it into the wall and it will charge it for, you know, whatever. Like I said, I just leave mine plugged in. Um, with it being a deep cycle battery, it's, you know, best to unplug it, run the battery down, then plug it back in. Um, anyway. I just have my regular, I have it wired up as stereo, stereo out for the subs coming out of the amp. I just ran a stereo split, split it up. Anyway, I don't really understand it, um, but it's not mono. It's set up a stereo for left and right, and it sounds really good. I ain't going to lie. Um, I'm using really, really old junk speakers. I had the box slipped around for it gives it more bass or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I've heard a lot about it. It really don't matter because it's in the shed. So, um, anyway. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. But, yeah, I just have that wired up really simply through here. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I didn't cover. But, yeah, you just keep your constant... I recommend keeping a battery in line. I would not use a power supply because then you run into issues like you lose all your settings on your radio. 
you know, obviously you have your um, audio, you know, set. All that will get erased every time, and it'll probably be a lot harder on the radio itself if you use a power supply because power supplies put out normally low amperage high voltage which is really really hard on the radio because right when you put any kind of load on the radio it loses all the amperage and kills it and obviously the high voltage will kill your LEDs as I was saying earlier so I definitely recommend if you're using it in a, an environment like this to have some sort of battery or some some sort of inline resistor or draw if you are using a power supply but like I said a battery just works really nice because you have you know all your amperage all the time um, you know just as it would be in a car and pretty much my charger is just acting as your alternator because your your car runs like 13.5 when it's charging 14.3 is a little high but it hasn't done any major damage to the radio so anyway that's just a quick little video on a little homemade system i've made i just cut out a little piece of plywood or a little whatever this shit is i mean cheap ass wood anyway made a nice little box for it hung everything up real nice in there like i said it's, that's off like an old refrigerator so i don't really know anyway <laughs> but works great um if you have any questions on how to wire a basic stereo i'm pretty good with it i'm not super good with the whole ohm thing but i can tell you basically basics on wiring series so if you have any questions just leave a comment down below i'll try to respond um but yeah thanks for watching guys um like i said p please uh like this video if you think it if it helps you in the future and if you want to see more content on like stereos or stuff like that i'm I can easily do that. I do a lot of cars and stuff also. So I can just, you know, do more videos on that. Um, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.